there. It's Tuesday. It's oral communication in context. I am Tudor Alvin, and I'll be your learning buddy for Eat Light TV. This is quarter two, week two of oral communication in context. In today's episode, we will be understanding speech context, speech style, speech act, and communication strategy. This is a great refreshment course since we have discussed these topics on quarter one, and we will go deeper about it on our discussion today. Our target is to expect our student viewers to first identify the different types of speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategies engaged in by people in various situations. Secondly, explain that a shift in speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy affects various factors such as language form, interaction duration, relationship of speaker to audience or receiver of message, roles and responsibilities of the speaker, the message itself, and the manner of delivery of the speaker. So, buckle up and ready yourself for a new learning experience. And let's get the ball rolling. Just like a balancing and juggling act that needs to make adjustment with movements to keep everything steady and controlled, communication is also a process where connection is maintained through careful balancing and juggling of all factors involved in the communication process. That is why we are here to help our students master how speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy affect language form, duration of interaction, relationship of speaker, role and responsibility of the speaker, message, and delivery. So, this will lead you to understand how communicative competence is important in building and maintaining good relationships in society. To further lead you to better understanding, let's look back on what these key concepts mean. First on the list is speech context. Speech context is the setting in which communication situation takes place. We have the second one, speech style. It is the form of language that the speaker utilized, which is characterized by level of formality. Speech act is an utterance considered as an action particularly regarding its intention, purpose, or effect. Lastly, communicative strategy. It refers to plans, ways, or means of sharing information which are adopted to achieve a particular social, political, psychological, or linguistic purpose. We need to understand this key concept since communication as a process involves many factors that contribute to the achievement of the goal of understanding between and among the members. Among these factors are the speech context, speech act, speech style, and communicative strategy. Every member of a speaking situation, especially the speaker, must always remember that these are the basis in choosing the form of the language that will be utilized, the length of the interaction, and the kind of relationship that he or she is going to establish towards his or her audience. Now, since communication occurs in varied situations, it is therefore understood 
that these factors will change and every change of this will result to a new choice of language. The duration of interaction and the relationship with the audience. We want you to digest this information with a role play. Sound exciting, right? I know you would love to act out your response on the given situations. Be attentive as I give you your role. Imagine that you are a grade 12 honor student and the president of your school's supreme student government. For the past two days, you have been preparing for a final graded report in your oral communication class, which you are going to present during your first period in the morning. You now come to school feeling confident and thinking that it is going to be one great day with the provided context. Think of the ways you will handle the conversation. Now that you know your role, here is the first situation. Susan, your mother, calls you over the phone to remind you to come home early to help prepare the surprise birthday party for your father. I'll be giving you 10 seconds to think. Wow, we have now our oral calm amazing student who accepted the challenge. Her name is Kaisil. Let us play her video on how she handles the conversation for our first given situation. I'm almost done with my report. I'm sure it will be a great day tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I'm done. I will sleep early today so that I can also prepare early for school tomorrow. <laughs> this will be a great day. No, mommy, because I already prepared my report. That's why I am not busy and I am happy. So, what's the matter, mommy? Why did you call? Do you need help? Oh, I just want to remind you to come home early today to help prepare the surprise birthday party for your father, sweetheart. Okay, mommy, I will. And I will prepare a small gift for father. Don't worry, I will take care of the decorations. Promise, Mom, I will come home early. That's good to hear, sweetheart. Thank you for the time. Goodbye, I love you. Goodbye, Mommy. You're welcome. I love you too. That was so impressive. With only 10 seconds, Casey was able to think of a way to handle that situation. Bravo, Kaisil. So Kaisil, here comes another challenge. I'm going to make some critical changes in the context of the first situation. And let's find out how you will respond to the changes and how it will affect the manner of communication. Okay, so the situation now is Mr. Reyes, your oral communication teacher, calls you to briefly explain to him how you are going to present your group's work before you present it in front of the class. Another 10 seconds to think.
Time's up. Let's see how Casey did it. Whew, I'm almost done with my report. I'm sure it will be a great day tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I'm done. I will sleep early today so that I can also prepare early for school tomorrow. This will be a great day. Oh, it's Mr. Reyes. Good morning, Mr. Reyes. Good morning, Kiso. I just called to ask you on how you are going to present your group's work in oral communication. Okay, sir. Thank you. So we will present our report through a PowerPoint presentation, sir. Each one of us will have a part to discuss. After that, we will ask our classmates some questions about our topic. And that's it, sir. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Maglasam, thank you for your immediate response. You're welcome, Mr. Reyes. Nice. Kaysil did not disappoint us. She nailed it and handled the additional challenge to that situation. We can really see how the manner of communication changes as the context of the conversation also changes. So, we can say that communication entails a delicate balancing in order to sustain connection and transact successfully. Today, we will dig in a little deeper and examine the factors involved in this balancing act. Each speech style, intimate, frozen, consultative, casual, or formal, or the way language is used, will greatly depend on the speaker's relationship, purpose of the conversation, and the speech context, such as the intrapersonal, interpersonal, diet and small group, public and mass communication, which in turn will also determine what type of utterance or speech act will be used. I would like also to add that while communication is ongoing, communicative strategies such as nomination, restriction, turn-taking, topic control, topic shifting, repair, and termination will be used to maintain the connection in order to successfully impart the message and achieve the purpose of communication. Now, there are also factors affected by the shift in speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy. Let's take a look at this. We have the language form, duration of interaction, relationship of speaker, role and responsibility of speaker, the message and delivery. These are the factors affected by these shifts. So let's examine them one by one. The first factor is language form. This refers to the formality or informality of the language used, and it involves the choice of words and how sentences or utterances are structured. Under language form, we have formal language and informal language. Formal language is used when talking with professionals or persons in authority, in a formal, official, or ceremonial occasion, situation, gathering, or event. Talking with a lawyer, a doctor, or even with your teacher often creates a formal ambience in communication. On the other hand, informal language is used without much consideration 
to rules of convention or etiquette. It is casual and mostly not well thought of or prepared because it is used to communicate with people with whom you have close association, like parents, siblings, and friends. So a speaker must identify words or statements that are um, suitable to the situation. It could be formal or informal. So again, the first factor is language form. So let's have the second factor. It is duration of interaction. This refers to the amount of time a conversation takes between and among communicators. So different situations require different duration of interaction. Some may take longer or short time, while others simply need an average length of time depending on the context of communication. Remember, the second factor is duration of interaction. The third factor is relationship of speaker. This refers to the speech style used by the speaker suited to his or her relationship to the person with whom he or she is communicating. Styles can be classified as intimate, frozen, consultative, casual, or formal. So since we've mentioned about the classification of speech styles, why don't we refresh, okay, what these styles refer to? On quarter one, we discussed about this, but this time, let's go to it again. The first style is intimate. We consider the relationship of the speaker to be intimate when the speaker talks to family members, best friends, or romantic partners. These may comprise private conversations or personal interactions. Second style is frozen. It is when the speaker addresses an audience in a formal gathering such as ceremonial events, Eucharistic celebrations, or even court hearings. The style is set or fixed. That's why it's called frozen. And thus, it rarely or never changes. Audience feedback is not required in the frozen style. Third style is the consultative. This style requires the speaker to communicate with the person whom he or she may have to clarify things, discuss a problem, or seek advice. Next one is casual. Casual style is when the speaker shares close and personal information with friends, classmates, or colleagues. This ordinarily occurs in everyday life. Uh -huh. And lastly, formal. The formal style is when the speaker has to deliver a pre-planned or written speech to address a crowd of people, such as giving opening remarks during a seminar, or the president making a public announcement or delivering SONA or state of the nation address. Remember this speech styles. So let us continue on the factors affected by a shift in speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy. The next factor is role and responsibility of speaker. We can say that this refers to the role and responsibility of the speaker, which will depend on the purpose and context of the communication. The role of 
the speaker in every communication process is very crucial. He or she must know the kind of situation that a communication occurs. So the speaker may be a person who gives information and additional knowledge to another person or an audience. Someone who convinces others for a cause or an individual who provokes laughter for diversion and fun. Hence, his responsibility depends on his purpose for communication, which may be to inform, to persuade, or to entertain. Moving on to the next factor, which is the message. This involves the content of the message. The message may be facts, opinion, feelings, order, suggestions, and questions. And finally, the last factor is delivery. This refers to the manner of delivery involving verbal and non-verbal cues made by the speaker. Consequently, we all know that different messages would result to different way of delivery. So delivery can be classified as extemporaneous, which is speaking with limited preparation and guided by notes or outline. It could also be impromptu, which is speaking without advanced preparation or unrehearsed speech. Or memorized which means a planned and rehearsed speech. But then, if you are not into memorizing, you can have the manuscript, which means reading aloud a written message. So, you may try all of these ways in speech delivery. Always remember the flexibility of the speaker to adapt different speaking situations would be the key to success. Earlier, KCL, one of our students, accepted the challenge in the form of a role-playing activity. So you, what did you notice on how KCL responded on the first situation versus the second situation? Did she respond similarly or did her mood or emotion change as she tried to address the different situation? Why do you think this is so? We know you have a lot of things going in your mind right now about how KCL responded to the two different situations. Our dear student viewers, the world we live in offers dynamic conditions that drive us to modify and adjust our behavior and manner of speech with others. In the same way, exposure to various situations changes the purpose, manner of delivery, words, and strategies that we apply to the various conversations. And there are also times when we are pressed with inevitable circumstances that make us react either positively or negatively on matters of agreement or controversy. There are moments we stand firm on our belief or concede when it is necessary. We say something according to what we hear and respond based on the turn of events or of the story. Kaysil, as a daughter, having a conversation with her mother, the language used may be informal, since they are of close affinity, and just as now. The loving daughter that she is turned into someone else when her teacher called her to explain how her group will present their topic in front of the class. Your delivery and choice of words apparently varied. In an instant, you spoke cautiously 
and seriously because you adapted to the fact that apart from age difference, she is a person of high authority and that formality of language is deemed necessary. From our discussions earlier, it is clear that the following elements are affected by a shift in the communicative processes. One, the language form, which could shift from formal to informal and vice versa. Two, the duration or the length of communication, which could be shortened or lengthened depending on how the conversation will be maintained. It was also made clear that the relationship of the speaker to the receiver of the message that could be intimate, frozen, consultative, casual, or formal. Lastly, the role and responsibility of the speaker, the message, and its delivery, which could vary depending on the context and purpose of communication. Our oral come amazing students, I hope that you had a fun-filled learning experience. In today's episode, I presented the effects of a sudden change in speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy to the roles and responsibilities of a speaker, message, and delivery. I also hope that you were guided in understanding that every shift in each of these factors results to a new relationship between the speaker and the audience, the message, and delivery. This has been Tutor Alvin. See you next Tuesday for more thrilling adventure. And always remember to be the best in oral communication in context. Only here on Itulai TV. See you next time. Goodbye.